it's been 10 years since the Atlanta school cheating scandal broke. I don't know whether you know anything about that or not, but what happened was uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, several school officials, the superintendent, several principals, teachers, administrators, test coordinators, all participated in what we, they called a, ch a, t a test cheating uh, thing, where they were changing the scores on the standardized test for the kids. And these were all black uh, teachers and administrators, and they uh, it was poor black kids, poor minorities. Some of them might have been other than black, but it, it was some of the poorest kids affected by this scandal. Now, so when they would take the standardized test, the teachers would collect them and they would have parties and they would erase and change the scores. Now, the reason this was going on was they would get bonus money. The superintendent, Beverly Hall, this was broke in 2009. The superintendent, uh, Beverly Hall, had just been awarded uh, superintendent of the year for, for the nation because of her uh, ability to raise the test scores and increase graduation, especially in urban schools. She had just received this award. So then some investigators went, went into the, some of the school systems, school uh, districts, and found that there was, you know, cheating going on. So, of course, when they first started, you know, investigating and saying that cheating was going on, they were trying to suppress it. And, you know, keep them from getting information, keep them from going in. And finally, Governor Sonny Perdue, who was a Republican governor, when he kept hearing about the reports, he uh, assigned a task force of investigators and to go in and, and, and investigate. So it all came to a head in 2015. And when it all came to a head, it was 35 teachers and uh, principals, uh, test uh, coordinators, all these people were involved in this cheating scandal. Okay, they were defrauding poor minority kids of a good education. A lot of those kids could not even read at, on a grade level. Now, instead of teaching the children, they were just trying to get you know get them to pass the test because money was tied to the test. So the higher your score, the more bonuses you would get. Not only that, they claim you get more money for the school system whatever everything was tied to the test but it was black educators defrauding poor black kids one lady testified in court one mother that her child had to take repeat the fourth or third grade two, two or three times she was so far behind so so we had these educators they went to trial they all got convicted some of them just took plea deals so it was only 11 that got uh had the trial for because the other people other ones, they just, you know, gave it up and said, hey, yes, we did it and took plea deals. But when, then they testified and they told everything that happened. Okay, so you would think when you hear about all these poor kids being defrauded of an education that the community would have rallied around the kids. That's not what happened. The community, the black community rallied around the educators, not the kids saying they didn't want them to go to prison. Uh, they were, you know, they, how does it look for these educators to go out in handcuffs? And, and that they were more concerned about the educators, not their own children. So they had uh, the trial. It all came to a head in April of 2015. So I was so distraught about it when, uh, when I read everything. I was following the trial and all that. And at the time, I was living and working in England. But, of course, I could still, you know, see everything and follow the news. So I decided to write an article about it after everything was over. Everybody had been charged and convicted, and you know, uh, and sentenced. Uh, and they were sent. They were convicted of racketeering and making false statements because the investigators that went in there, you know, a lot of the people lied to them, you know. And so they were the ones that lied, making a false statement. They were convicted of that, and they called it racketeering what they were doing because they did get money for it, bonuses for it. Beverly Hall. The superintendent, who was the ringleader, she was pressuring. Now, another thing, a lot of those three teachers were pressured into this because some of them probably didn't have tenure. They, they, their jobs was on the line. One woman was a, a single, one teacher was a single parent, and she was threatened. Either you go along with this thing or you, you know, you lose your job. The greed. 
Beverly uh, um, Hall received over five hundred thousand dollars. They say in bonuses. So right before she got sentenced, she was you know she died of breast cancer, and so she didn't get to go to jail simply because she died first. But she was the ringleader. She was the one that was given the uh, award, <laughs> superintendent of the year for the nation. Even Obama appointed her to some kind of board, you know, based on that. So. So, so I was upset about it. I was living in, in England at the time. So I decided to write an article about it in the American Thinker. Now, when I wrote the article, the only name that I mentioned was Beverly Hall, the superintendent. I didn't mention anybody else's name. I just told what happened and not educators, black educators, whatever. Okay. All of a sudden, about a week later, I get an email from one of the convicted principals. Her name is Dana Evans. She writes me this email and, and attacks me and says she's innocent and I, she didn't appreciate the article and, you know, and she's a Christian and she went to that school to save those poor kids and she knew nothing about it. And in, in the trial, she lied. She said that her teachers that were participating in this scandal, she knew nothing about it. They did it under, you know, and they all the teachers said she's lying. She knew all about it. To this day, she still denies it. But for her to email me and I know nothing about her, I was like, wow, I don't even know this lady. But my father has always told me, you know, whenever you throw a rock into a crowd, the guilty person will holler out. And that's basically what she did. She hollered out. So she emailed me and I told her. So I, I kept the email for a while. And I wish I still had that correspondence because we, we corresponded about twice, I think. So I, I responded and I said, ma'am, I didn't even know who you were. But now that you've uh, told me, You've told me everything. I didn't even know who you were. How, how are you going to be upset with me about writing about something? And your name wasn't even mentioned. But that's guilt. Now, I don't I don't know whether she was in prison at the time because she had gotten sentenced. Uh, she got sentenced to five years. She, I think they said she served one and she had four years probation. But at the time, I think she might have been in prison when she emailed me, telling me, you know, that she's innocent and, and, uh, and she doesn't appreciate what I said and all these other things. So anyway... So this uh, anniversary of this, this is a 10-year anniversary because the thing broke in 2009. The actual sentencing and the trials did not pl take place in 2015. So I was just reading about the anniversary of it, and I just, I, you know, I was so distraught about that. I, it was hard for me to sleep because here we have poor minority children being, you know, cheated. And I think it's what upset that uh, Dana Evans lady so much because of the way I said it. I said black educators cheated poor black kids out of an education. That's just the facts. And she couldn't handle that. And to this day, she hasn't admitted. But here we are, black educators, black people harming their own people. Now, poor black kids, poor minority, it doesn't matter. Poor Minority could be black, Hispanic, or whatever. But those kids are the ones that suffer the most from not getting a, a proper education. Those are the ones that need uh, school choice. That's why school choice is so important. Because here we have uh, all these educators lording over their own poor kids and not giving them a good education. And they say uh, 2021, the last of the kids affected by this cheating scandal will graduate in 2021, but they said over 900 of them to this day are still uh, being tutored by, you know, special tutors to try to bring them up from the, because they were, were not being taught. They were so negatively affected by this cheating scandal that they had to be, you know, tutored and just try to catch up because they were cheated out of an education. That is why it's so important that to never vote for another Democrat. No Democrat should ever be in power again. They have ruined uh, the education system. It's run by Democrats. The teachers' union is in the bed with the Democrat Party. And this is what we have. But if you want your children to have a good education and you are a poor minority, regardless of whether you're black, Hispanic, or whatever, you should be fighting for school choice. You should never vote for any politician that does not support school choice. That's the first thing you should look for because your children are the future. And I remember, you know, it was Governor Sonny Perdue, a Republican governor that blew the whistle on this. And he was saying the reason uh, he did that, because he was the only one that was concerned about those kids. 
He was the one that was concerned. He said, listen, these children are our future. They're the next generation. This is not right. They will not be prepared uh, to get good jobs and things. He said it. The white Republican man. He appointed the task force to investigate this. Not the black educators, not the parents. And then the parents jumped on the side of the educators. Another thing they were complaining about uh, was uh, how was that going? Go, how would it look? Because some of the educators went to prison and they may see their own students in prison. Oh, well, you know, because <laughs> some of them had been teaching for a while and it was like, it won't look right for them to go to prison and they might be in there with their own students. Uh, oh, well. Uh, but, you know, another thing I thought about, and I was wondering when this whole thing was going on, when I was following it, I said, you know, where's Al Sharpton? And I said, they're not crying racism, because, you know, they always cry racism, because all the uh, people that were uh, being investigated, tried, and convicted were black. So I said, how did they get away with that? I said, that was a good one. How did they get away with not being thrown into racism, this, that, and the other? And you know what I found out? After the trial was over, Everybody had been convicted and sentenced. The, uh, the uh, district attorney and their whole team of investigators or whatever did a press conference. And guess what? Every one of them were black. Uh, the, the district attorney, the, the, the assistant district attorney, all the investigators, uh, everybody that was involved in this investigating this scandal was black. Therefore, that kept Al Sharpton and all these other so-called leaders from running in front of the camera crying racism. I think that's the smartest thing they did, but to appoint nothing but black people <laughs> to investigate other black people. And they did an excellent job. And once this lady emailed me, that made me really do research. And I started looking into the uh, investigative paperwork and things, and it was just, oh my God. It was so much fraud, so much lying, so much. And she claimed, and, she, and I told her, I said, as a principal, you claim and you knew nothing about this cheating, that your teachers were behind your back cheating. I said, but as a leader and a principal, you either knew or you should have known. And that's what they said. They said, you, if you either knew or you should have known, being a, how in the world can you be a principal at a school and all your teachers are somewhere having a party and changing grades and you knew nothing about it? So I just wanted to talk about that because what I read, I was reading about the uh, the history, the uh, anniversary of it, and I kind of got sad because that was a dark, to me, this all happened in Atlanta. That was a dark, to me, a dark time in our history for, you know, poor black kids, poor minority kids. That was really sad. and But it just illustrates, like I said in another video, your enemy are those that have more access to you, that's closest to you. Okay, these poor black children were being defrauded and cheated by black educators, not not white ones, not white ones. And I think we should never, ever, if you're poor and you're black, you, you should never vote for another Democrat. They, they don't have your best, best interests. They just want you to be a voter. They just want uh, to lord over you and rule over you. They don't care if you succeed. They don't care if you succeed. They've messed up the school systems. Everything they touch, they mess up because they only want power. They don't care anything about you. When you vote, please think about your children. Think about your future. When you, uh, when somebody's running for office and they're campaigning and they come and they speak with you, stand up and ask them, what are you going to do about school choice? I want school choice because that's what those proud parents did when they went to that Elizabeth Warren rally. They had done their homework. And Elizabeth Warren had... Uh, had an education plan in her platform and it was eliminating school choice and those poor parents knew that the only hope for their children uh, was, was school choice that they could get a good education and then when they knew that and they confronted elizabeth warren and you should and you should confront every politician locally or whatever and say what are you going to do about school choice uh what are you going to do don't don't settle for i'm going to fix the school system that's been going on for decades they're not going to fix the school system they're just going to throw more money away. Have a blessed day.